here what's up giants fans hub watchers youtube subscribers twitter and instagram followers it's kush back at it again with another giants update video and this one we're going to talk about a couple of giants players that were starters last year or presumed starters at least for one of them but going into this year might not be in that same role anymore these guys that may have lost their starting job whether it's because they you know it's their fault you know so that means poor play poor decision making on the field or player acquisition where we just got somebody better and for all three of these i got three players in mind it's really a combination of both but as you all well know the giants went ahead and had <laughs> almost a perfect off season both in terms of free agency and the draft so, and we got a lot of influx of talent with a lot of good players coming in the building so this was kind of to be expected and honestly you could probably find more than just pl three players to list off but uh, these three kind of matter a lot so i'm gonna start off with everybody's favorite pro bowl tight end evan ingram <laughs> and evan ingram if you've been watching the channel for a while now i'll say at least since the beginning of the 2020 season you guys know i am the conductor of the get evan ingram off the giants train <laughs> all right i've wanted this dude traded or cut since september and it ain't happening you know it didn't happen in september it's not happening anytime soon uh joe judge really likes the guy the coaching staff really likes the guy and i'll say this evan ingram's just a really nice person in real life he's a good dude seems really likable seems really cool to hang out with he's just not a good football player and that's what it comes down to man i can't I, can't, I, can't, I won't even get into it, but if you watch the channel for a while, you know how I feel about Evan Ingram. If I could trade him for a bag of chips and a Gatorade, I would. But he's here to stay, unfortunately. And the reason why Evan Ingram may lose his starting job is quite simple. We got a better player, in my opinion. And I did a whole video on this last week. I'm going to put the I link. You know, it pops up in the right-hand corner right now, so you guys check that out. Kyle Rudolph is a better tight end than Evan Ingram. No matter which way you slice it or dice it, you go career-wise, Kyle Rudolph all absolutely smashes him. You want to go recently? Yeah, does Ingram got some receiving stats on him? Sure thing. But what does Kyle Rudolph have on him? Great blocking and sure hands. Kyle Rudolph ain't dropping a football if you're passing it to him, especially if you're wide open with open space for basically a go-ahead, first down, potential touchdown win against the Eagles. Kyle Rudolph does not drop the football. That's what he's most known for. And I'm not going to get too much into Kyle Rudolph himself because once again, there's that whole video. I'm going to let you guys go check that out. But Evan Ingram, it, it's a combination of both. But I really do think Kyle not only is a better player, but he will better fit what Jason Garrett wants to run. Jason Garrett is more used to the traditional type of tight end which kyle is and the giants themselves haven't had a traditional tight end in a really long time we've really looked for just receiving type tight ends in the last you know five or six years and it's crazy because evan ingram has been here for five years already so i should probably say six or seven years going back to even when we had um guys like number 84 larry Donnell, who was technically a receiving tight end really we just haven't had that traditional guy and kyle rudolph just fits the system more so, and Ingram, I mean, it's not much of a stretch to say he could lose his starting job, or maybe, you know, it's something where he still has the title of starter, but Rudolph ends up getting more snaps, and even then, I'll consider it fitting this criteria. But yeah, Evan Ingram is one of those dudes. And another dude is, well, the other two dudes here, but another one is a very young guy that a lot of people have sort of forgotten about, who was technically a starter last year in O'Shane Zimenez, outside linebacker for the Giants, you know, third round pick in 2019. Now, let me say what, I'm, what I mean when I say technically a starter. Because last year, our starters at outside linebacker, I think, were Kyler Fackrell and Marcus Golden going into the season. Actually, no, no, no. I think they were Lorenzo Carter and O'Shane Zimenez. Either way, after we traded Marcus Golden and, you know, Kyler Fackrell got reduced snaps and whatnot, at some point during the season, O'Shane Zimenez was a starting outside linebacker, whether it was at the beginning or some point before his injury. But O'Shane Zimenez, he hasn't necessarily been a letdown or a disappointment because once again, he is a third round pick at outside linebacker. He was the first dude ever drafted from his school. Let's not completely shoot O'Shane Zimenez down the trash can because the dude has some accomplishments to his name. You know, it's, it's great that he made it to the NFL and all that, but he hasn't sort of panned out what we hoped him to be, right? And once again, to be fair to him, he only played in like four games last year before he went down with his injury. But in those four games, 
he didn't do anything that suggested he improved in any way with his game with his pass rushing game he looked exactly the same as he did during his rookie year which is a bull you know a bull rushing power rushing type outside linebacker that doesn't really have the the bull rush or the power to effectively do it because of his size and just actual strength and a guy that hasn't doesn't really have any finesse moves that isn't too good in coverage like an outside linebacker should be especially in the system that the Giants run and a guy that really has a lot a lot of work to do if he you know he's trying to be a starter on this team uh, at the end of the day I think O'Shane's gonna end up being either a role-playing outside linebacker or he just might end up you know falling through cracks ending up on the waiver wire or whatnot and a lot of people have compared O'Shane and Carter to each other. And I, I don't really see the comparisons. Even before last season started, people were saying, oh, O'Shane had a similar rookie season to Carter. And the only way they were similar, I think, was in terms of stats. Where O'Shane had four and a half sacks in his rookie season. He did follow it up in 2020 with zero, but once again, four games. And also the Giants had a very weird rotation at outside linebacker for most of the season. And I, in Lorenzo Carr's rookie year, he also had around four and a half sacks, I think. But the difference is when you look at the actual game, you know, you turn on tape and you see what these guys are doing. Lorenzo showed a lot more potential in the pass rush game and he was definitely better in the, you know, the run stuffing game than O'Shane was. And that's why last year when I made a video suggesting that Lorenzo Carr would break out and to be honest, he looked like he was well on his way to breaking out before the Achilles injury. Um, it's because I saw this potential and I saw the coaches that we hired and what they could do with him. I don't see that with O'Shane. I think O'Shane is just, he's, you know, meant to be a rotational guy. And it doesn't help the fact that our number one outside linebacker, in my opinion, was Lorenzo Carter. And then we went in the draft and we got a far superior player in Aziz Ojolari. Uh, O'Shane just, he's going to fall back in the depth chart. Even if a guy like Afidi, who has potential to play on the edge, you know, sometimes if you toss him in as a potential outside linebacker, Lorenzo, Lorenzo and then Aziz also ahead of him O'Shane just once again continues to fall back into the depth chart and he's definitely I think if there's a guy on this list for sure that won't be a starter it's gonna be O'Shane Zimenez and then to close out the video with the last guy on the list and, and this guy has been he's people have taken away his starting title before the offseason even began before the 2020 season finished people have kind of pegged it that Darius Slayton wasn't gonna be a starting wide receiver for this team anymore and I kind of disagree. But first, let me talk about why people say that. It's it's because they had way too high expectations for this dude. Now, a lot of people don't realize he actually had a better sophomore year than he did his uh, rookie year with the Giants. And the guy probably had the quietest 700 yard receiving season for any wide receiver I've ever seen because people just kind of gloss over the fact that, hey, he had 750 receiving yards in 2020. That is not anything to sleep about. Now, did his catch percentage decrease? He went from 57 to 52%. Yes, it did. Now, did his effectiveness, and what I mean by that, his impact on the game decrease as well? Definitely. In his rookie year, he had eight touchdowns as opposed to the three he had this year. And I think he didn't have um, any touchdowns until like week eight or something like that. Or he had, he had that one touchdown against the Steelers, and then he didn't have any again until after week eight, which was kind of a crazy stat. But what we have to realize is two things. One, teams now had tape on Darius Slayton, so he couldn't really go off against them like he did last year. But once again, statistically speaking, he did have a better year. And two, the corners he was going up against. Now, we did have Golden Tate on the outside as well, but Darius Slayton was facing more number one corners this year than he was in 2019. And now with the upcoming year coming about, and I know we drafted Kadarius Toney and we signed Kenny Galladay. Obviously, Kenny Galladay is going to be the number one outside wide receiver right now. That alone takes off a lot of pressure off of Slayton. And I don't think people should automatically peg Kadarius Toney as a, you know, surefire starter just yet. He does have a little bit of learning to, and I do think in one year from now, he will be a starter and he will be our second best receiver, but not right off the bat. He still has to work on his route running, and I do think a year of NFL experience will do a lot for Darius Slayton in, turn, Darius Slayton in terms of this battle that we're going to see throughout the offseason for who gets that third wide receiver spot. Now, I'm not shocked, or I won't be shocked if Tony wins the job, but I don't think we should rule out Darius Slayton right now. I think just the signing of Kenny Galley alone is going to tremendously help this guy. But those are three players that come to mind when we're talking about starters that may lose their job or may not be starters anymore. You guys put your thoughts down below for anybody that I may have missed and what you think about the list in general. That's it for now. I'm out.
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.